In today's video, we're going to be talking about the area and the perimeter of figures. But what's essential about this discussion is that these figures are similar. Now, if you remember from uh, a while ago, similar figures have the same shape. Uh, another way of thinking of that is that all the corresponding sides are going to be proportional. Uh, you can also think of that being all the angles are going to be the same too. So, uh, but in particular, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at problems like this. Uh, we're going to have problems something like this where we have a perimeter. Notice this is a perimeter. We know the perimeter of this little triangle. We're trying to find the perimeter of this big triangle. Now, all we know is that they're the same shape and that this side compared to that side is one yard compared to five yards. We're also going to do some problems where we're trying to find the area, right? The area. So again, just bear in mind, this is area, this is perimeter. Those are different, right? So we're going to be looking for things like the perimeter. We're going to compare perimeters versus here. We're going to compare areas, the whole area, right? Very different things. Uh, again, they're, they're similar figures, the same shape. We're going to know the ratio, but we're only going to know the ratio of one set of corresponding sides. But that's all we need to know to figure out the area of the other. So here we go. Let's get into it. Okay, first problem. Now, with this problem, what we've got is we've got the one we just showed on the previous page. Now, again, notice they are similar and the label sides are corresponding right make sure that these facts are covered you can't just do it for anything it, they have to be similar and the side lengths that you know have to be corresponding so here we go we've got we know this side we know this side we also are talking about the perimeter now just a random coincidence this five yards compared to that one yard this is also five yards for the whole perimeter just random coincidence that those happen to be the same thing okay now what we know is the perimeter in other words once around this little triangle is five yards okay now it might be an isosceles we don't know if it is maybe it is maybe it isn't it turns out we don't have to know I mean maybe this is like two and two but it might be 2.31 and 1.9 right so but this works anyway so it turns out when it's just comparing perimeters, the, um, the calculation is pretty straightforward. You just multiply the ratio, right? I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? If this side is five times bigger, then, then this side is five times bigger, and this side is five times bigger, right? So each side gets bigger so by five times, so that means once around is also five times bigger. And you just end up with an with the five yards that we started with, right? I'll just do that in red, just so you know. You know, five yards, this is the five yards because that's the perimeter, right? This is the perimeter. That's why I'm calling that five yards. Then I'm gonna multiply times the ratio of these two sides, times the ratio of those two sides, uh, which is gonna be right, five yards over one yard, right? So this time it's five because of this five, right? So just to get it, clear there right they um, those five yards are coming from different places in the problem okay uh, and again I just have the P here just sort of as a reference uh, you know, I'm gonna make that go away because it kind of makes it look like it's in the equation which it isn't okay um, okay so I got five yards times that now there's a whole bunch of yards that we get to cancel right yards yards so I just got five times five over one well sure enough that's 25 yards so if I go once around this bigger triangle, the perimeter is 25 yards. Okay, great. Now this works for any crazy shape, right? Now, all right, this time we've got a hexagon. Again, important, they are similar. The labeled sides are corresponding, right? Make sure you've satisfied that condition. Now, this is 54, again, maybe this is a regular hexagon we divide by six and you know it sort of looks like it but there's nothing in here that says that's absolutely true right but it turns out we don't necessarily have to know that um, again it's perimeter so it's a length so all I got to do is multiply times the ratio of these two lengths okay so I'm starting with my 54 right 54 feet times now you know we could come up with the whole exact 
you know, formula and stuff, but let's just kind of think it through, right? Look, if, if we're going from nine to five, then, you know, my ratio certainly isn't gonna be nine over five because that makes it bigger. So it really ought to be five over nine. So, so again, rather than get too bogged down in the details, you know, it's getting smaller. Look, it should be five over nine. Uh, now, what I could do, right, I can multiply that across 54 times five divided by nine, but you know, that's gonna get a little messy. Uh, you know, let's just use the fact that we can cross cancel, right? Look, nine goes into 54 six times, right? So six times five, still have the feet, gives me 30 feet. So the perimeter of this small one is 30 feet. And of course, your answer in the answer box would be 30 for the feet, okay? All right, so again, if it's perimeters, we just multiply times the ratio of the sides. All right, now we've got a different kind of problem. This time, we're talking about the area, right? Before we were looking at the perimeter. Now it's gonna be a little bit different when we think about the area. So in particular, let's, let's check this out. Now this looks like a square. I'm not positive it's a square, but just for the sake of discussion, let's just say it's a square and uh, see what would have happened. Now, this is 81 feet squared. Again, notice it's squared. That also tells me it's an area, right? So I'm talking area this time, right? Not perimeter. Well, what could make that work? Again, if it's a square, then this would be nine feet, wouldn't it? Well, let's look at the ratios. Again, they are similar. They have the same shape. That means the ratio of all the sides must be the same, all right? So nine goes to four. Well, then, hey, nine goes to four over here, right? And so my area would be four times four, which is 16 feet squared, right? 16 feet squared. Um, so if I've got that, right, then what I need to do is, I could just stop here, right? But but let's, let's actually use this to analyze it more generally, right? Because we're not always gonna have a nice simple situation where it's a square and it just works out and you can just see it. Um, so let's actually use this to be more general. In particular, what I'm thinking is this. Now look, to get an area, I multiply two dimensions, right? Well, so what happened here was I had 81 feet squared, right? Now, I had to first have the ratio of four ninths because this got smaller, right? So I had to multiply this times four ninths because one of the sides gets smaller, but I also saw that this got smaller. So I also multiplied four ninths because this second side got smaller, okay? Now, let's get this up. Um, you know, let's just remember that we're working in feet and just, just work with the numbers, right? So, so what I could have said more generally is, here's my original area. I'm gonna multiply times the ratio of the sides squared. Okay, now this is 81 over one, right? Okay, so let's do this. Okay, now, now I can simplify this. Uh, look, 81 times one, this is gonna be 81 over one, four squared, 16, nine squared, 81. Well, hey, that's pretty cool. Look, those cancel, and I just finally get an answer of 16 feet squared. Now notice I got that without going through and starting to figure out what all these dimensions were. All I said is I'm going to square the ratio. Okay. So let's use that now with a, with a shape that's not quite so pretty. And that would be this one right here. Okay. Now for this one, again, I know the area, right? I know that they're similar. I'm going to try to use this area to figure out that area of this one. Now, this is eight meters, that's four meters. So I, you know, I know that the, the side lengths doubled, but the area doesn't just double, right? We have to square it. So what I would say is that my original area, right, it's meters meter squared, right? So, and again, we're just gonna remember that it's meters and just keep it simple, right? I guess 16 times, and we're gonna end up doing it as a fraction, right? My ratio, of the sides, but I'm gonna square them, right? So this is eight over four, 
my pen isn't agreeing with my mouth. Eight over four, the whole thing squared. Now I could start expanding it and all that kind of stuff, but before I do that, let me, let's simplify this. Look, look, I mean, why have big giant numbers if we can avoid it, right? Well, eight over four, right? That's just the number two, isn't it, right? So that's the number two. Well, two squared, that's pretty easy to do, right? So I end up with 16 times two squared, which is four, right? And I got rid of the ones just because I don't really need them. Well, 16 times four, that's just 64. And again, my units were meters, so this is 64 meters squared, okay? And again, look, I, I didn't, I didn't figure out the hypotenuse, or, you know, or, or even, well, it's not even a right triangle, so, but I didn't know the height, I didn't know any of these details other than I started with an area of 16, and I took, and I squared the ratio of the sides, right? Okay, so now let's move on to one that's a little different, okay? So now with those, I was given the ratio of the sides. Now sometimes we're just gonna to be told the ratio, look, so again, these are similar figures, right? The similar figures. I'm gonna try and find this dimension H. Make it a little easier to see. That's an H, right? I'm trying to find H. Now, I wasn't given any of the other sides except that I started with three centimeters, okay, for this side, right? So in this case, I'm not actually being given the perimeter. I'm just being told A side, just one side. Now, other than I am told that the perimeter ratio is seven to three, right? So in other words, it goes both ways. You tell me what the perimeter ratio is and I'll tell you, also tell you what any of the side length ratios are, okay? So cool, well, H and three centimeters. Now, again, we've got a perimeter of seven to three, seven to three, well, okay, so that should be probably pretty obvious what that's gonna be, but let's just write out how that would work, right? So yeah, I'm starting with three, three, times, if you want to think of it as three over one, you can, the ratio of the perimeters, which is seven to three, okay? And again, you've got the same thing that happened before. This three cancels, and here, let's make that easier to see there, All right? And you just left with a seven. So I've got seven centimeters, seven centimeters. 